Okay, welcome everybody. I don't, I don't know what the, the, the big deal is about having a press conference here at this point in time. There's not a whole lot to talk about. Um, but we'll, we'll figure out a few things to talk about, I guess. Um, you know, where we're at right now, I uh, had, uh, you know, two weeks of good recruiting, um, two good recruiting weekends. Uh, got a lot of good work with our young guys, practiced our older guys on the weekends. Uh, you know, did a lot of recovery. Uh, a lot of lifting, got the blood pumping, healed our guys up a good bit. You know, we're, we're pretty healthy right now. Uh, thank you. We're, we're pretty healthy right now. Shoot, even Jared Barber's ready to go. Uh, obviously, we're not going to play him, but, um, you know, but guys are in a good spot. Uh, had finals Monday, Tuesday, and yesterday, wrapped that up. Uh, had a good practice yesterday, have another good practice today and tomorrow. Uh, give them some time off. Uh, you know, I, I like to give them a few days off prior to the game. Uh, to go home and spend time with their their friends and family, and, and uh, you know celebrate uh, Christmas. On, uh, we, we will show up on the game on on the 25th in, in Memphis. Uh, our guys are excited about going to Memphis. Uh, Liberty Bowl is uh, is uh, has a great tradition. Uh, they do things right. Uh, you know it's going to be extremely organized and well planned out. They got lots of support. Uh, you know, and it's been a very successful bowl game for for many years. Um, you know, it's a good matchup. Uh, SEC Big 12 is a good matchup. Texas A&M West Virginia is a good matchup. I think it's uh, it's um, you know it's pretty neat that you know Texas A&M left the Big 12 three years ago to go to the SEC. Uh, you know, and have had success there for for, for three years. Uh, you know, they're seven and five now, which Coach Summers not 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 ecstatic about that. But those games are, are are close losses to really good opponents. Okay, so three years ago. You know, we took their place in the Big 12, um, and uh, this year we're seven and five, and we got some pretty close losses to some pretty good football teams. So, both teams are pretty similar, I think, and, and I think both teams will be uh, excited about being able to play in this game, and, and uh, hopefully the fan bases are excited about about traveling to Memphis and getting on Beale Street a little bit, going to Graceland, and, and, and watching a heck of a football game. Uh, you know, the the, the, the Aggies uh, got great tradition. I've been in College Station plenty of times. They got an unbelievable fan base. Uh, you know, they just just you know, tremendous tr tradition uh, when it comes to their football program. Uh, you know, it's about 110,000 people that are in those stadiums when they're when they're playing. So it, it, it's a special place now, and, and, and uh, it's going to be a challenge for us. I think they're somewhere along the lines of 27 and nine uh, since they joined the SEC. So they've won lots of games. Their games they've recruited top five classes the last three years. They got unbelievable talent. Some of the coaches that, that we've talked to that's played a and will say when you see them on the huff, when they, when they come out on the on the, on the, the game field, they're going to look like they're you know, one of the best teams in the country, and they will. They're going to be big. They're going to be long. Uh, they're going to be athletic. They're going to be fast. So we, we, got, we got a big challenge, maybe the biggest challenge that we've had all year. Um, offensively, um, you know, uh, you know, the, the history, uh, you know, Coach Sumlin and I go way back, you know, competed against each other when I was at Texas Tech. He was at Texas A&M and Oklahoma. Um, you know, obviously worked for him for two years at Houston. We're pretty familiar with each other. Um, uh, you know, when I left, he, he promoted Kingsbury to continue running the offense that we installed at Houston. When Cliff left, obviously hired Jake to uh, – Continue to run the offense, uh, so it, it, there's there's a lot of familiarity with what we do offensively and what they do offensively. Uh, they're they're young, you know, their whole team's pretty young, but uh, they got some pretty key players on offense that are young. Uh, the quarterback was a very highly recruited uh, player out of Arizona. Uh, we'll continue to get better and better. I'm sure this last month has been very good for him. Um, but uh, the, the Allen kid and, and you know the back of Hill has got a was as good as anybody in the country at the beginning of the year. So good quality young quarterbacks, uh, great looking receivers. Uh, you know they're they're pretty balanced. So we you know you can't really just kind of hone in on one of them. Uh, they're they're more along the lines of Baylor with about four or five guys that they spread the ball around to. Uh, they're they're running back by committee like we are. Uh, three good quality players uh, that are all juniors that that all can carry the load. They can give it to any of those three guys 20 sometimes a game if they choose so. Um, up front, they've had two top five draft picks the last two years. They're going to have another one this year. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they're right
right tackle. Uh, number 70 is, is going to be another top five player this year. Their center uh, is, a, is probably the best center that we've went against all year as well, the Matthews kid. The Matthews are an interesting story. Um, my, my, my older brother actually coached all these guys in Fort Bend uh, down in Houston. Uh, but Bruce Matthews was a 17-year vet in the NFL. Uh, coaches, uh, uh, I think he's at Tennessee right now, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, this is the third Matthews that started uh, for Texas A&M, and there's a couple more coming through. So I'm sure they're going to A&M as well. But uh, they, they got lots of good players, and they, they're very familiar with what they do. Uh, defensively, they're in limbo. Um, you know, they're going through a coaching change. Uh, and I've been through this a lot. You, you go through a coaching change. You went through it once this year with, with Kansas, but you know what? What can you? What kind of an offense can you or defense can you instill, and how much can you actually change when you really don't have that much prep time? I mean, you know, you, you, you think a month is a long time, but you don't get that much practice time to where you can actually change things. Uh, there's too much going on. So all we can do is 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 prepare for the defense that we see on tape. Uh, they're, they're a four-down team, uh, like to do a lot of different things with the front. They play a lot of man coverage, probably more man coverage than we face this year, uh, which will be something that we've been working hard on. So, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what to expect with it. Uh, all we can do is prepare for the guys that are out there. They, got, they play a lot of different people. Their corners can cover. Their safeties are, are active. Uh, up front, they got one of the best pass rushers in the country with the true freshman. Uh, the, the, the Miles Garrett kids, so uh, they, they, they're going to look good. And they're going to play good. Uh, we got our work cut out for us offensively. Special teams is really solid. Kevin always has taken pride in, in the special teams. He, he works a lot with it. Uh, there's no weaknesses with their special teams. It's probably the biggest challenge, equal or even greater to what Kansas State was. Uh, well coached, sound in everything they do. They're averaging 45 yards in, in a, a punt. Uh, their, their kicker, uh, Kind of ironic that his name is Josh Lambo, which is obviously very, very similar to Josh Lambert. But he, he's dang near perfect on the year. He's only missed two. Um, you know, their, their kickoff coverage unit and their punt unit uh, is extremely athletic and fast. Their, retreater, their, their, retur their returners are very athletic and skilled. They're averaging almost 15 yards of uh, punt return and 25 yards of kickoff return. So that, that area is going to be key. And especially in, in, in a bowl game, uh, the, the speed of the game is hard to duplicate when you don't duplicate it for a whole month. Uh, and special teams kind of where it shows up, so we've got our work cut out for us uh, with that as well. So excited about the matchup, ready to go. Uh, practice a few days here, get, get, get prepared, and then get down there and then repeat everything once we get down there, have a normal game week of practice when we're there, and <coughs> look forward to the matchup on, on, on game day. So that takes some questions. When did you find out Shannon was leaving? Uh, is he coaching the bowl game, and whose decision was that? Uh, whose decision was if whether or not whether he's coaching. He coaching or not? That that was mine. I, I, I've known Shannon for a long time, and trust him as much as any coach that I've ever been with. You know, I've talked to Mark Stoops several times throughout the last three or four days. Uh, it's a great opportunity for Shannon. I couldn't be happier for him. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not. He works for an offensive head coach. Who's, who's going to be involved in, in, in offense, and, and you all, I think, understand that. So an opportunity to be able to go work for a defensive head coach and have complete control of it is something that he's ready for at this point. He, made, he, he, he joked around a little bit saying when he, got, when he came to me four years ago, he thought he was ready for that job at, at that point. After four years, he knows he's ready for this job, and, and I know he's ready for this job. So it's a great opportunity for him and his family be able to have complete control of it, I would never I would never try to talk anybody out of that. I, I did the same thing at Texas Tech back in 2008, and, and it worked out good for me. So he's ready for it, and he's going to do a great job. <laughs> as far as the bowl game goes, I mean, I, he coaches our quarterbacks, and he's going to continue to coach them until the end of the game, and then he's going to move on. Speaking of quarterbacks, Clint, Skyler, what's the situation with, with them now? Yeah, we're, we're, I, I anticipate having both ready to go. Uh, we, we will practice them. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I've covered this. It's really not any different than, than the last time we covered it. Uh, Clint's done such a good job for us throughout the course of the year. You know, is responsible for us being in a bowl game. Uh, has, did, did nothing uh, to, uh, uh, you know, to change what I think.
think of him, you know, as far as uh, 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 the starting quarterback and, and, and what kind of a kid he is and what kind of a competitor he is. Uh, with that said, Skyler is, is improving. He's taken a lot of reps the last three weeks, and he's and he's playing pretty good. So I, I anticipate to have both ready to go, and we'll probably make a game time decision on on who starts and, and what the rotation will be. Two points clear. He's ready to go. He's ready to go. You know, I mean, he he's been he hasn't been taking the reps over the last month. You know, so we got to evaluate him in practice. You know, not only here but in the bowl game as well uh, to see where he's at. You know, you don't you don't take reps. It's it's, it's going to hurt you. You know, and Skyler's been taking a lot of those reps. So uh, we will monitor it here in practice this week, and then once we get down there, we'll look at it. And we'll You joked on the conference call about blowing up the offense, obviously, because you guys know each other so well, know each other's offense is clearly not going to do that. But what are some of the challenges that you do face when, again, you're going up against a, a guy who you're familiar with and who's familiar with you? Well, I, I, this, whatever those challenges are, it's going to be the same thing on the other side of the ball. We run the same offense. We don't run the same defense. We don't run the same special teams. So that's just like preparing for any random. Uh, offensively, we're we're familiar with them. They're familiar with us. Who does it benefit? I don't know. You know, I mean, I, whatever benefits we have, they have too. So uh, we've dealt with this before. Uh, you know, TCU runs the same thing. Texas Tech runs the same thing. Uh, we we've dealt with it before, so we we, we know how to kind of hide some things, change some things, uh, communicate a little bit different. Uh, you know, be a little secretive with some things. And that stuff that we're used to, so it's not going to be—it's not going to be abnormal for our players. Uh, we change signals each week. We change boards each week. We change you know, verbiage and communication each week. So it's—it's it's something I don't think uh, will be an issue. You know, who it benefits more? I, I don't know. It, it, it probably benefits both teams, both defenses. Dan, I believe you said rotation. When you're talking about your quarterbacks? Don't know yet. I mean, again, I, it's, it's about how they look in practice. You know, it's about how they look in practice, and, and we're always going to be, regardless of position, uh, who gives us the best chance to win. It, it's more about winning. Uh, you know, any, any game is more about winning than, than anything else, whether it's future, whether it's you know, getting guys more reps or whatever it is. Yeah. I know this is a long way off, but when it comes time to replace Shannon, are you looking for another coordinator? Is that something where you take just a quarterback's coach and you'd assume the coordinator responsibilities again? Do you have a, a game plan for how you want to approach that hire? I do not yet. Um, there, there's, there's no urgency to the matter. Uh, you know, there, I'm not even going to think about it until after the game. You know, after the game, there's a couple of weeks uh, to where nothing's going on. There's no recruiting. Uh, there's, there's the kids are home. After our bowl game, our guys get two weeks off, which doesn't happen very often. So they, they get two weeks off after the bowl game. So so there's no sense in me being up here in the office because there's no going to be nobody's going to be around. Uh, so I, I take that time and, and, and you know, kind of figure out, reevaluate not only what we're doing offensively from a staff uh, staff wise, but you know some other things as well. So I'm not in a hurry to do that. You know, we'll go to the convention in Louisville. About the same time we start school, the national conventions in Louisville. Uh, probably go there and meet with some people and figure out what I want to do. No class right now. You guys are almost on a pro-like schedule. How beneficial is that to their development? Well, uh, at this point in time, we're not developing guys. We're not interested in developing guys. We took the last two and a half weeks and did some developmental stuff. Uh, you know, at this point in time, you better hone in on who you're playing. So t uh, yesterday was the first day we talked about Texas A&M. Uh, so we're, we're in game prep mode right now. We're going to go through a whole week, and then we'll, we'll get to the bowl game and repeat it to, to get, them more, uh, get them more familiar with who we're playing. So anytime you're around your guys, there's a developmental advantage that, needs to, that, that does exist. You get to spend time with them. We get to communicate with them. They lift. They, they see ball. They get to play all that. But it's more about the game at this point in time than it is the ball. 
talk a little bit about Oliver leaving and your relationship and how he brought you here and you know whatever comes to mind on. on yeah, that. I mean, he, I, you know, it's if you look at his resume, it's not surprising. You know, I mean, it, 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 he's uh, he's a uh, the most intelligent guy that I've been around, and is a uh, athletics guy, football guy, smart guy, guys guy. Uh, I don't think our our communication is going to stop. I don't think his communication and his interest in West Virginia is going to stop, uh, West Virginia University in particular. Uh, you know, in the role that he's going to in the NCAA, I mean, that, 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 he's going to be in the know. And he's going to know a lot of things that are going on. Um, and I think some of that information is going to get relayed this way. Um, you know, just because this is his alma mater, and, and he had a big part in where we're at as an athletic department at this point. So. Um, you know, gonna gonna miss the conversations clearly, but I know they're not gonna stop. Uh, he, he he's done a lot for me. He's he's obviously brought me here, but gives me a lot of advice, and he's a sounding board that I uh, use quite frequently. Um, done a tremendous job of, of building the athletic department that we're currently at, and the conference that we're currently at, with the with the support that we currently have. So he's gonna do a great job at the NCAA. What he's doing, I don't quite know, don't understand yet. Probably he doesn't either. That, that's going to be a that's going to be a broad role, I would anticipate. How about how about when you first when you first came here and you know the situation was coaching waiting and there was all kinds of crap going on, but he stayed you know he stayed he stayed the course with it. Yeah, he well you know and I mean he's a he's a guy's guy. I mean I I, I trust him and, and and currently trust him. So when our communication uh, took place about four years ago, about this time four years ago. Uh, that we had a press conference in here, if I'm not mistaken. It was about, it was about this this uh, date exactly uh, four years ago. Uh, I, I just trusted his vision, you know, and, and what he wanted and, and, you know, where he wanted the football program to go. Uh, you know, and I think we've made great strides in the four years that we've been here. I think I have as a head coach, and I think we have as a football program as well. You mentioned four years ago. Um, Shannon was the only holdover from that first staff. Can you talk about that, just kind of the turnover that you've had to deal with? Obviously, it's something you've, you've kind of mastered at this point, it seems like, but just what what that has meant to you and, and moving forward, you've talked a lot about consistency, the, important of, the importance of that. Yeah, it's a reality in, in today's day and time. I mean, we talked about this last year. I mean, you look at the guys that have left, I mean, they've left for some pretty good jobs, you know, so <coughs> Shannon's, Shannon's the same as is the, is the previous guys that we've lost, in particular offensively, uh, that have moved on for some pretty good jobs. You know, so that that that's a compliment to what we're doing as well. You know, what we're doing offensively. Uh, there's a lot of people that have interest in it. There's a lot of people that want to do some very similar things. So that makes our guys marketable. It's it's just a part of the deal. It's gonna that's not gonna change, uh, especially if you have success and, and you know that you have success, you're marketable. <coughs> you know, your guys are gonna move on. They're spread their wings so uh, you know I'm, I'm happy for them you know it, it's just part of the job I mean, you can't you can't you can't uh, expect to do have my position and not have to worry about staffing every year it's, you know the chances are it's not the only coach we're going to lose off this staff this year it's just, it's just the way it is uh, with that said I, I love the staff and you know the guys are doing a great job recruiting the, the camaraderie with everybody uh, is good Shannon would be the first one to tell you he's going to miss the camaraderie that exists. Uh, offensively, defensively, we're meshing. I want continuity. I think it's important. You, you need to do everything you possibly can to keep the coaches in place, uh, doing what they're doing if you want to show improvement. <coughs> you know, there's, there's going to be times where you need to make changes because uh, things aren't exactly the way you want them. There's nothing on our staff right now that I view as important uh, when it comes to the changing. Can you tell a little bit about the uh, – Frustrations last year of having a player like Kevin White and not having him bloom yet and and become and you know he, he winds up being a All American and probably a first round draft pick from catching thirty five balls the season before. I mean, I, I, frustrations I don't think is a is an appropriate term when it comes to that. I I, I take great pride and I, I uh, you know I'm I'm thrilled and it was it was exciting to be able to watch him blossom. You know, you take a guy that has never been a, a, a quote-unquote real guy, you know, real productive guy, whether it was high school.
high school, junior college, or his first year here, and to watch the light come on and, and watch him start figuring things out and watch him be protective into the player that he was this year, I mean, that's, that's awesome. I mean, there, there isn't anything frustrating about that, I can assure you. That's called coaching and that's called developing. It's not the first time we've taken kids and developed them into great players, and it's not going to be the last time that we take guys and develop them into great players, especially at that position. A week ago, the big story was uh, Tony's contract. I mean, it's kind of an afterthought now, but can you talk about the importance of that, the commitment you made to him, and, and why that was important to you? Well, I, I think we all could see the improvement that we made defensively. You know, I mean, that, that's. And we got dang near every one of those guys comes back. So, you know, we've had some turnover defensively that, that uh, for various reasons, um, existed. Um, th this is Tony's home. Tony wants to be here. My working relationship with him is excellent. Uh, the way he calls it, the confidence that he calls it with, the scheme that's out there is, is great. It's exactly what we want. So uh, to be able to lock him up, and, and that was important to Oliver before he left, was be able to get that done. Uh, I, I'm hoping to get you know, seven or eight, you know, eight, eight other coaches, I guess it would be seven now, seven other coaches locked up and, and, and locked in as well. So uh, for, for Tony to be able to get that, he earned every bit of it. And you know, we're really thrilled to be able to work with him in the next uh, few years. Hey, when you promoted him, though, I mean, at that time, you could have done what you're doing now with an offensive coach and gone out and gotten anybody or hired another coordinator. But I think you did what a lot of people might have thought was Bold, maybe, and promoted him, and he hadn't done it before. What did you foresee? What did you anticipate that led you to make that decision? Well, perception is not always reality. There's, sure, there's a few other perceptions right now that 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 might exist with the people that are not reality. Uh, I, I I liked our communication, and you know, even when even when Coach Patterson was here, there was communication between me and Coach Patterson and, and, and Tony and, and a couple other defensive guys on where we need to go with the current defense. Mm -hmm. and, and Tony had a pretty good idea, a pretty good handle on where we needed to go with it. Uh, and and uh, you know, th those, those ideas turned into you know, being a pretty good idea. For you guys, it seems like you're taking a pretty relaxed approach towards this, the bowl prep, and or at least giving them time off to rest, recover, all that stuff. You talk about the importance of that versus the importance of practicing, and are you guys leaving any practices on the table in favor of letting them? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would, I would challenge, I would challenge anybody to, to say they've had more prep work than we have. You know, everybody plays games at different times. You know, the longer there, you know, there's not a set amount of days you can practice. It's not spring football. You know, wherever your, whatever your game is, you got, you know, so many hours in a week to be able to practice. And then when practice is over, you can basically practice as much as you want to until the game starts. So then you got to you got to balance what you know. Do you practice the heck out of them, wear them out, or do you get them fresh and uh, healed up and in a good place to be able to win the game? Uh, it, it's bowl, bowl 101 is about wanting to play the game. We had an issue with that two years ago. Uh, I don't think we're going to have an issue with that this year. Okay, thanks, coach. All right, appreciate it, guys. See you in the